Hello, my name is Oscar, and I will be showing you how to install Linux CentOS 5.4 over the internet. Before we get started, you need to know of, of a couple of different uh, requirements. First requirement is for you to have the ISO from CentOS that allows you to do an installation over the network. You're looking for the net installation disk. It's much smaller than the regular than the regular disk or the DVD. In fact, it should be about 10 megs. You're going to need that. The next thing you need is internet access for the computer in which you want to install Linux. Now, the video is going to walk you through doing all this on a virtual PC. If you like to follow along with that, make sure you also have VirtualBox installed which is free by Sun. You can find it on the internet. And make sure you configure a virtual machine in it in order for you to install CentOS 5.4 onto it. Go ahead and start up the machine through VirtualBox and you should expect it to boot into CentOS 5. From here you should pick Linux Text. After you select Linux Text as the option to install, you're going to go through a bunch of options which will fly through on this video. They're very um, self-explanatory and you can always come back and adjust them to your needs, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on them. The one that's really important is the source of your installation, which we're going to select to be HTTP. There's two fields that you need to make sure are properly configured, otherwise it's just not going to work. It won't get past that step. And that is the website address and the folder location. Notice how I put them in here and to get the actual location I, I went to the website and I copied the path that's up there on the browser address. That is what I need to do to find that. So you copy that CentOS slash the version slash OS and put that into the directory. The next step, if you don't see the image stage 2 retrieving file, that means you did something wrong and you're going to have to put in the path again after this if it fails. In this case we did it right so the installation should move forward with no problems and be on our way. We're going to use the text mode as opposed to VNC. Every time I try to use VNC the installation crashed so your mile may, may vary, I guess. Go through the installation as you normally would for all your stuff. Configure your hard drives if you need. Configure the partitioning, the layout. Enter your root password. <coughs> Enter your root password. You're going to configure basically as you would normally do. All the settings are really up to you. If you have any specific questions about the settings in here, give me uh, send me an email or send me a Twitter, and I can probably walk you through them a little more in in detail. But notice how it's getting the installation, and if you look down here on below the um, you know on the window at the bottom of the window of the virtual box, you'll see that activity is really happening on the network. We're downloading information as we go instead of having to read it from the disk. And the reason why that's advantageous in some cases is that when you come to the actual installation of the packages and the software that you're going to need, you're only going to download and install what you need, theoretically. Now, whether the package managers actually handle it properly or not, that's another story. But ideally, you are only going to install what you need. So when you go through your package selection and you only select very few packages, then that's all that should be installed when you're complete. Not only that, you won't have you know, four or five discs or a big DVD sitting around that you're never going to use again just because you wanted to install Linux. The amount of time it takes for the installation to complete will vary greatly on several factors. One is your internet connection speed. Two is the mirror that you pick. 
Make sure you pick a mirror that's fast according to your location. And there's different ways for you to find that out. If you already have an existing Linux installation somewhere, you can use the fastest mirror plugin to kind of give you a good estimate of what's a fast location to install from. And then just let it go. Um, this one took about 20 minutes, but we have a really fast internet connection and the mirrors at kernel.org kernel are really fast, at least where I'm located. So, again, this is this will be different for you, and the time expectancy or the time that you expect to complete is different. But you'll eventually get this screen that says restart, <coughs> that you've completed your installation successfully, and you can re reboot. Make sure before you reboot, you actually unmount the disk, so that way you don't boot back into it and you don't waste any time with that. You, you're going to boot right into CentOS and see the normal startup procedure. The first time you boot your system, you will get a window a screen to configure stuff. We're going to skip that for now, but you could explore that and make any changes that you need. The first thing that we're actually going to do is update the system to the latest and greatest packages. Now you would assume that an internet installation would have those packages already, and I wish it did, but it doesn't. You still have to run yum, you still have to run the update commands and let that happen and make sure you you see all the packages get installed and ready to be used. So, After you install the OS, make sure you run yum update, get all your packages ready to go, and then you're set to, to start using your server. After you run your update command, you will be ready to install new packages or start configuring the ones that are already in the system and start using them. Whatever you choose to use from here on out is up to you. Uh, but it's easy to install Apache, MySQL, WordPress, Joomla, any any application that uses web server stuff is generally pretty easy to install on Linux once you have a server. So. Give it a try. Let me know if you have any questions. If you have any feedback, questions, requests for other tutorials, or anything you want to get back to me, um, you can find me, my contact information on my personal blog, and that is notagrouch.com forward slash contact, and that will get you um, enough information to find me. Hope you have a good one, and hope you enjoy this. Talk to you later.